Hey guys, how are we all doing? So Dan from Trading with Dan here. This is our Bitcoin evening update. So if you guys wouldn't mind smashing that like button and we will go straight over to the charts. Um, so yeah, um, what I have done here is I've um, drawn a Fib retracement tool um, on here um, from this low here to basically the high of this wick because um, I just kind of wanted to, just to put in context um, obviously the this this wick down that we had um, which was basically um, pretty much to the 0.5 fib um, which is, which is the midpoint obviously of the move obviously 0.5 being 50% retracement um, and also this horizontal level of around nine, 10 well around 10,500 10,600 um, and then obviously we made our well we've made our way back up to the 236 so um, if you actually look at this move in the larger context of the move, I mean, it probably makes it, it does make it more clear for you if I, if I obviously squash the screen up a bit, because then you can see how much we've moved up and then how much the retracement is. And then we just sort of bounce back up, back up. But even when we had the retracement down to the 0.5 fib, um, a lot, a lot of retracements will come down to the 618. And that is, um, that is often a target for, um, for retracements is the 618. Um, so uh, yeah and the reason i'm showing you guys this anyway because I've, I've i've seen like a lot of um a lot of people um just generally a lot of youtubers uh crypto youtubers um i've not seen a lot because i don't see a lot but i've seen a few um that have, that have basically been getting the knickers in a bit of a twist just at this move down just this oh this manipulation this it's so bad this needs to be got rid of in bitcoin yet they're quite happy for this kind of move straight up but then <laughs> a slight retracement to the 0.5 fib um, and then basically instantly back back up again um, is just uh, is just too much for them to bear. So um, I think you just have to look at things in, in context, really. Um, and this is the context. This whole move here is the context. Um, oh yeah okay if they if they are very um narrow mindedly looking at this breakout of this pennant as the con as the context of this move um then yeah then quite clearly um that is um quite a vicious move but um it's just not um really <laughs> it's just not really something you should be doing <laughs> looking at it in the context of this last part of of this whole massive move that we've had up um so right so we've cleared that so um and and also um there were no real retraces in this whole move up so there's gonna be a lot of people buying buying more buying more buying more buying more and they've had no reason to um have their trailing stops hit um so then when we finally get a move down you start hitting trailing stops that are hitting market sales market sales market sales and there's there's nothing manipulative or anything about this wick down um i mean that's just pure price action from people getting very bullish buy more 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 on the way up and i do this um i will i will put on um bigger positions if i'm going to have a tighter stop and then if my position goes on side um like with a big move like this i i will i will see this as one of the big opportunities to make a lot of money um and put on an even bigger position with an equally tighter stop and then just moving it as i'm going as we're going up the trend um but then obviously once my tight stop then gets hit just think i've got a lot bigger positions that's a lot bigger um a bigger position on market selling um as soon as we start to get a substantial move down and that'll be the same for lots lots of lots of traders will be doing a similar thing they'll be buying 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 on the way up averaging on side it's called averaging obviously is the opposite of averaging offside and um, buying more buying more um increasing um their position size beyond what they would normally trade um because they're in profit i mean in my mind I, i've always traded that way i've kind of seen it as a profit hedge so if a move is going to potentially go like this i don't know if it will or not but i will put on bigger positions buying it up because when you catch one of those moves with a bigger than your normal position you're going to make a lot bigger than your normal profits and and that's kind of another aspect of trading um is to make um just big big profits when you have the opportunity um and then yeah fair enough you might take small losses small losses or basically break evens when you're trying to when you're basically basically swinging um swinging for uh, what's it called uh, 
Um, I don't know what it is. We're swinging for when when you basically try and hit the ball really hard for a six, basically, um, in cricket. Um, but yes, when you are um, swinging for the stands or whatever, um, that's an American term from baseball, isn't it? Um, so yeah, so basically you swing for the stands, um, and then when you get it, you're gonna make a massive profit. So anyway, what I'm trying to tell you is that there's been a lot of people doing that, a lot of traders doing that. So when we start to do actually make a substantial move down, their um, their trading stops are market orders no one has a trading stop as a limit order because it's just ridiculous just yeah but i'm not even going to explain why because you'll know why you wouldn't have a limit order as a, as a trading stop you'd have a market order uh, as a trading take profit um so all those market orders for all those positions that have built up this whole move all basically get sold down there and it's as simple as that so right i've got that i've got <laughs> i've got that off my chest so it's good though it means you don't really need to worry about it. this not necessarily making us bearish um i do keep saying i do believe we'll play out this zone a bit um you can see we sort of floated on up um no doubt being aided by these four hour stochastics um turning turning back up um so helping us obviously you can see where they turn back up here just helping us to float back up um but i would be looking more for the higher time higher term time <laughs> higher time frame not higher term time frame the higher time frame ones um 10 hour 12 hour and well daily is not looking bad to be honest but the 12 hour the 12 hour is the main one that we like to look at um is is coming down so um is this going to be a bullish reset of the 12 hour or is this or is this eventually going to weigh in on the price um to be honest it is actually looking like it's going to be more of a bullish um reset because because like I said, price action is floating up nicely and holding up here. Um, and this is all, all obviously happening in the context of the 12-hour stochastics resetting. Um, so yeah, um, if the 12-hour stochastics can basically get down to around here um, without... Um, well, yeah, basically, without price action making a move, it doesn't it actually. It doesn't even matter. Price action can make a move down, but when once twelve hour stokes get down to about there, and then can potentially start to turn up again, then that's when we'll probably see our next leg up. So if it comes from price action being down here, fair, so be it, fair enough. But if it comes from price action being up here, um, then I mean that would be very bullish, and we'd be looking for another leg up. Um, I don't like necessarily drawing horizontals. Um, between the actual horizontals i've drawn because i'm not a massive fan of over complicating it and i'm actually not going to draw it um, but you can kind of see um just the midpoint of this range is obviously is obviously important um you can kind of see the wicks below it brought back up all these wicks all all these wicks this one this one this one this one this one all got brought back above um this um sort of equilibrium medium medium zone uh, mid zone of this range um so i mean are we going to form sort of a potential uh, this well it is a box obviously but are we going to sort of stay in this box and um, start resisting the the top and and um, getting support at the bottom play sideways a bit i i, st I still believe that um well probably <laughs> i still believe that is a likely option i do think that um we would need to test some downside but i'm not i'm not as um as certain on that as i was this morning um with just the drifting up and staying up here um but but yeah really really it is all i all eyes for me on these um 12 hour stokes and also if the daily does come out of this um sort of bullish area here um and starts to move back down and if it moves if it moves back down into the purple zone then then I, I pretty much do have no doubt at that point that we will be um, coming down to test 10,500, 10,600 zone, testing it properly. Um, and then definitely knowing that is is either support or it isn't. Um, and then if it is support, then I think that would be really good for price, act, price action for Bitcoin. And we would be making our way up into the new zone. Um, so um, that is it really. There's not really much else... Um, i have to say on price action we've not really had a had a busy day um we've not really had um much happen other than just flat uh, price flow upwards and um, we'll just have a quick uh was over says weekly stochastics yeah let's see they're they're just looking as they were um as they were yeah um and um i mean on the weekly it, it's obviously generally looking good um it is looking like we want to uh, basically get into this zone it's look it is looking very strong 
Um, so on a weekly time frame, yeah, I mean, definitely over the next week or two, I would expect us to be in and playing in this zone. Um, just on a shorter time frame, I am expecting us to um, have to, well, just come down, come down and test here properly. Um, and then I do feel like because we have um, formed, um, well, there's obviously been buying at this midpoint, obviously been buying at this midpoint. So we only really need to get close basically a four hour candle say below below this le below these levels before below these closes here so around here so which is um yeah so basically around eleven thousand on the dot um and then that would i think that will then trigger um the move down to here because there will be selling of people that are they'll be selling of the basically positions that are buying this line once we then start to close kind of blow they will then they will then puke their positions um, and then yeah we'll come back and we'll come back down and test down here play it out a bit and then hopefully in the ideal world ideal scenario then we just curl back up um make a nice move up and blast our on way <laughs> onwards onwards and upwards so um yeah that like so like i said it's, it's quite a quick video guys not really too much else um to say really like i said you just gotta view um this candle in this in this context um you can't view this candle in this context um because it is not this candle is not basically correcting price action from this move um, it is basically um correcting price action from the entirety of this move from down here so that's the takeaway that's the takeaway uh, value point that i want you to take from this video um is not to not to lose your head um like um lots of other um crypto youtubers appear to have been doing um you just look at it in the context of the bigger move yes okay when you're looking at everything daily and you're not looking at the bigger picture compared to yesterday um yeah i mean it's it is a savage move but um just judging today's price action from yesterday um is <laughs> it's just not really the best the best way of doing things um it's just well i say it's not really is that's i'm obviously being um being a bit for sarcastic there it's definitely not the right way of doing things so anyway right that being said one last time so this is not a financial advice i'm not a financial advisor always do your own research and um yeah i'll speak to you guys in the morning